August 19th, 2024 meeting of the St. Joseph County Election Board to order. Would everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our next order of business is approval of the August 7, 2024 minutes. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the August 7 minutes. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Matter carries unanimously. Uh, record destruction request from Gidget. Gidget, could you come over to the microphone over there, please? The yes, yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, um, I am looking to approve the 2022 election, the general and the primary, according to the retention code. I can destroy them 22 months after the certification, which should be either September 17th. I would like to either destroy them September 30th, give a few extra days, or October 31st. October what? 31st of this year. And is my understanding that there's, there is no action, no lawsuit, no controversy pending with respect to anything arising out of uh, either the primary or the general for 2022, is that correct? That is correct. We still have the 2020 elections at the warehouse under Trump because I do believe that is still under investigation. How do you, what's the process for destroying them? Do they get shredded, burned? They, they get shredded. Okay. They go into the bends and then maintenance takes them to the big shredder that comes to the archives building. Okay, well, I'll entertain a motion to approve Gidget's request to destroy the 2022 records not sooner than September 17th and not later than October 31st. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried unanimously. I, uh, if I could just um, ask Gidget to give just a little bit of her, the, the role that she will be playing in the general election. Gidget is our uh, records clerk, and so that's why she, I wanted her to come before the board to have an official, um, uh, on the record, the destruction, date of destruction. I just think that's uh, a good thing to do. But um, Gidget, could you tell us a little bit about what your role is in central count? Yes, um, when we do have the central count, I am in charge of uh, making sure everybody processed the ballots correctly. I do have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do mail-ins and walk-ins. Everybody is trained. If they don't know or they don't remember, then we, I'm here to help them and um, guide them through, answer any of their questions and stuff. Um, but then after the election is done, all the ballots have been opened and counted, then everything sits for the 10 days. After there is no recount and the certification is done, then all those ballots and material come to me and I box everything up according to the IC codes and get everything labeled and put in storage. And how many years have you been doing this? Since Central Count started, I think back in 2015. Yeah. Right. So I've been doing it ever since. Very good. Can you uh, just give us an email the day before the destruction so that th for those of us who are old enough can at least play Barry Maguire's Eve of Destruction one time sure. that day? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Very good. Is that any other questions? No, thank you. OK, thanks. RBM contract is the next issue up. Okay, we, uh, Keith McGinnis is here from RBM and we needed to have an updated contract from Keith. I think the last one was signed by Andy Castelny if I'm, if I'm, if I'm understanding that correctly. So um, this is a contract from RBM running through December 31 of 2024. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted it approved by the election board. Andrew? Yes, because the, um, it's a bit complicated the way that these things run in Indiana, but uh, this is a contract between RBM and St. Joseph County 
that is doing work on behalf of the election board. So my suggestion was that the election board actually approve the contract, but then it is ratified by the commissioners. The commissioners sign, and they're the ones that are able to bind the county to the contract. See so. that the set up for commissioner's signatures exactly. on, on the agreement. Yeah. I just I thought it would be most appropriate before we submit it to the commission to let them know that the election board reviewed it and approved it as well. Okay. Is it the same as the last one? It's a good idea. Because the money comes out of the election board's budget, so. Cents off those paper rolls. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the RBM professional services agreement as is and to su for submission to our commissioners for their signatures. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 That one carries unanimously. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Next one up is the Pilot Vote Center Worker Partner Program. This is just a follow-up to our discussion, the two previous meetings. Um, the do documentation is there. Um, we did decide at the last meeting that um, with uh, Diana Hess's guidance, we have decided that we will just do the partner program, trying it this election cycle with just one, one partner from, one pair from uh, the Democrat Party and one pair from the Republican Party. And that's the documentation for it, so. Okay, well, I don't think we need to vote on it or anything, do we? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you for that. And again, Diana, thank you for your input on that. Last meeting. Uh, vote Center Worker Contracts Update. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's the formal one that we had talked about before, but this is the actual one on paper uh, that the Vote Center workers will have to sign, uh, making clear all of our expectations. Very good. And are these on, are these going to be online for anybody to see? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a great Pretty good idea. idea to put them both online, I would think. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Nothing further on that, I don't believe. Okay. Who's your hall pass? All right. We've been uh, recruiting very well with our work the vote program that we have from the Election Assistance Commission, and it is dovetailing into a lot of uh, teenagers that are interested, high school students that are interested in working at the vote centers as well. This document is provided by the Secretary of State. It is the Secretary of State's Hoosier Hall Pass program, and it's an actual document um, that the 16 and 17 year olds fill out, and this is, um, uh, this is something that we had not talked about in the previous um, election cycle, but it is gaining some support. So I wanted the election board to have a copy of it to approve the use of this. Again, it's boilerplate straight from the Secretary of State's um, uh, website. And um, I, think it's, I think it's perfect. The, we have the principal sign, you have the parent and the guardian or the guardian sign. Um, it gives the statutory uh, requirements for uh, who can be a vote center worker. And I'd like to continue to pursue this because it's, it's the youth that are getting involved at the high school level, and then we are assuming that they will continue their involvement, which is what we want to get the younger generation involved. And they also get a certificate from the secret signed by the Secretary of State and a lapel pin. So uh, they are trying to incentivize um, and reward these 16 and 17 year olds. So I was looking for you to at least acknowledge or approve or whatever needs to happen, well, but I wanted I'll, you to I know. I will entertain a motion to approve this St. Joseph County voter registration contract form for 16 and 17 year olds at votes, as vote center workers. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. That's, a, that's great. Uh, just in terms of making comment on that, I think that's an excellent initiative, and I hope that it just continues to grow. Everybody tell everybody you know about it, please, all the high schoolers. Uh, if you have any high schoolers in your life, 
uh, know any school administrators. I think it's, it's a very powerful program. And the other thing is that we will match the uh, high schoolers who will be first time workers with veteran election workers. So, and they of course have to go to the training as well, so. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Next up is the follow up on Ben Dallas candidacy decision. Uh, I asked to have this put on this agenda meeting because of Mr. Dallas's public comments at the last meeting. Uh, I think he deserves explanation from us and, and to hear our, our particular position, so I'll start off. Um, I, and I, I will entertain a motion to make this vote, but I would also, on this particular issue as opposed to on the issue of whether or not Ben is a nickname for Benjamin, uh, I would vote not to allow that candidacy with the MAGA in a nonpartisan race because of the, what the whole spirit of the law, two reasons. One, the spirit of the law on what it means to be involved in a nonpartisan race. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Dallas's honesty about the, the goal was to basically let people know of his partisanship, and I understand that. Um, but I would vote no on that ground, and also because I think, I think it is an issue of first impression. I don't know that it's ever been addressed in Indiana. But I also think this runs into another area, which is electioneering. And it would, I think what you're asking us to do is effectively participate in electioneering, because on election day, no candidate who's a candidate can, can have a name like MAGA and their candidacy at a polling station, uh, at, within the bounds of the polling station. They can be outside of it, but once they get inside, it's, it constitutes electioneering. And so, uh, which is impermissible and is actually criminal. And so, uh, this would basically be asking the election board, in my opinion, to participate in electioneering by having a candidate's name and, and the MAGA designation on the ballot uh, for everyone to see in the, within the, the realm of the voting center. So I would even use that as another basis and, and uh, that's, my, that's my explanation for why I would vote that way and will today vote that way because I think it's important that we, that we put it to a vote and also put it to public comment or comments from everyone else. Yeah, I, I would uh, concur with, uh, with Tom's reasoning on um, on the, the basis for the decision. Uh, the, the legislature made a clear distinction between a partisan election, which is almost everything that we do, and nonpartisan elections. And they, they specifically put school boards in the nonpartisan category. And I think in order to honor that legislative intent, uh, it is important that we um, make sure that it is, that is enforced at the local level as well. There are plenty of opportunities for candidates, especially in smaller local races, to tell people what they think, to tell people what they think the issues are, how the board has acted appropriately or inappropriately, uh, and to actually have, have everything out there. So it's, it's not as if anyone is stifled. It's just that the, the, the reason, the, the nonpartisan nature of this race uh, is um, really, is, is what the legislature intended. And, if that's what they intended, that's our job to follow through and make sure that it happens. Amy, I, I have recused myself from this. Oh, you did. Okay, so then uh, I guess, Chuck, I'll entertain a motion to deny uh, Ben Dallas's candidacy also based on the designation of MAGA in his candidacy name. So moved. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, so the vote carries two, nothing with... Uh, our clerk, Amy Rolf, is abstaining. Uh, other business? Yes. I just w wanted to make sure that the party chairs are still aware that we have to have our absentee list of workers by August 30th. Um, to just kind of give you an idea, right now, this was as of Thursday, so I know it's gone up since then. We have 1,100 absentee applications that Kim and I and voter registration have been um, processing. So um, it's going to increase and we're going to actually need absentee, at least two from, one from each party to work 
in September because it's going to get pretty heavy. Um, okay. Just kind of wanted you guys to have an idea of where we're at right now. Um, if I had to take a guess, I would say we're probably at 1,300 because this was last Thursday, so um, we're, we're getting it. Um, yeah, we got 76, 76 online today, and then I think we had 70 some in the mail. So, what, what did we end? With, what did we end up with four years ago? Do you have a sense? Of that um, absentee. Right. I think there was fifty-two thousand. Fifty-two thousand. Absentee or is that absentee. Including early, just absentee. That was that was absentee. But I mean, bear in mind that was COVID. COVID. So, sure. I do want to. I do want to throw that out there. <laughs> I want to know what the outside <laughs> risk is here. Yeah. So. <laughs> I thought uh, Chris had estimated between 35 and 40,000 absentees for this election cycle. That's just a guess. So, mm -hmm. right. It was mm -hmm. on the combined absentees, right? Yeah. 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 Well, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And we, we, need, we need to start getting it ready sooner than later. So I guess we need experienced workers too, because we're probably not going to be doing. They probably won't have all the training done by the time we start that process. Correct. Um, I mean, I think. Yes, I have to see what the parties present to us. So all that right. way we have an idea. Um, and we are working on the resolutions for the the satellite. Yes. Okay. Yep, okay. The next I just need it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. That's it for me. Any other business? Yes. I have a brief uh, thing. I sent an email out to the board. I just wanted to bring this up because it was something that was discussed at the last meeting. There was a question uh, about uh, Epic Church was a vote uh, center in the spring. They're declining to be a vote center in the fall. And there was a question that I raised. I know um, uh, Diana raised it as well about how do you remove a place that was there in the spring. And I remembered part of the code that said that you couldn't change, you know, you can add, you can't subtract. That part of the code um, is three t uh, Indiana Code 311.10.26.3. That actually has to do with absentee satellite offices, not vote centers. So what I was remembering was that we can't we can't remove a place that's incorrect for a vote center. You can change the you know you can change the vote center location. There's actually a whole procedure for that. Um, you know if you need even two days in advance of the election, if there was an emergency, the election board can actually change a vote center. But the idea that you can't shrink or remove a vote center from primary through general, is I, that was incorrect. So you are able to do that. You can't do that, though, with an absentee satellite location. If you do it in the spring, the code is very clear. You have to have that same place offered in the fall. I don't think that's an issue for us. So I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. Yep. Any other business? Yep, I do. I just wanted to report on uh, the fact that we have contracted with Civic Ready, which the county has the platform of Civic Ready. And elections and voter registration is going to um, start a pilot program for texting. They're directly texting the workers. So this we're, the pilot program would be for our absentee workers. And they would sign up um, and agree to get information. We would only give information and reminders and things like that. Uh, so it's exclusively election information that we were going to do. Other um, counties around the state have used texting, direct texting to their election workers, and they have said that it's been very, very effective. So I think it's a really uh, good thing for us to give it a, a try. We'll start with our absentee and see if that works, if they, the feedback that we get from them is good, the, the, the clear communication. And then we would expand that to our vote center workers to remind them of the trainings that they, you know, the trainings that there are, the start time, uh, just short little texts to keep in the forefront of their minds about their commitment to uh, working the election. So um, I'm very excited about that. We've, we're in process of uploading uh, contact information into the texting program, so I'll keep you informed on that, it, whether or not it's, it's a good thing or a bad thing. 
Um, I'd also like to entertain the conversation about additional, more focused training for our inspectors. Uh, from the feedback that I received at the Vote Center worker feedback sessions in person and uh, the written materials as well, there were, I wouldn't say quite a few, but there were, there were enough concerns about the functionality of the inspectors that I think we should look at a more focused kind of training for them. They are responsible for everything that happens in the vote center. And um, so what I'd like to do is I would like to have a, you know, design just a, a, a more specialized training for them. They wouldn't go to two trainings. It would be right now we do a training for the inspectors and the judges and then the clerks and the sheriffs. So what I would like to do is redesign the inspectors and the judges training, particularly focused on provisional ballots. Uh, there's a, as, as we know, as the election board, there's a lot of uh, confusion about it. There are also resources for the inspectors that are in their inspector bag, which we know they have not even opened because we can look in the bag and many of the forms and, and instructions and things are simply untouched. So we have a lot of resources, but they're not being used. So um, I, I just wanted to, to bring that up because I, the, you know, our goal is to have the, the most efficient and effective and, uh, elections. And I think some, uh, a redesigned training program for the inspectors and the judges um, would be a good idea. Along with that, I would love to see the inspectors and the judges um, be invited to work one day of absentee. Uh, we have 28 full days of absentee. They certainly would be paid. It would be a paid thing for them. But if we do some training with them and they get a hands-on experience on, dur during absentee, I think that will reinforce the learning mode that they have. And I think it would benefit all of our vote centers um, if the inspectors and judges were able to do that. Now, I know a lot of inspectors work full time, but we do have the Saturday, Sunday voting. So um, I, I, I think I, we could start out with seeing if this works, do a, you know, a pilot program and see if we get people to voluntarily um, offer, you know, voluntarily come and work for absentee. It's so much less pressure if they're doing it in absentee because they are not in charge. They can watch somebody else in absentee do the provisional and then, uh, you know, all the other things that need to happen. So that's, what are your thoughts? Sound, sounds great to me. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay. So we would offer then to the inspectors and judges to work one day of absentee and just see who takes it, who, who, mm -hmm. so it's like an opportunity. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, all right. And then in the, you know, a year and a half from now, we can talk about making that a required part of, I guess, inspector training or something like that. Mm -hmm. But right now, of course, I think offer it, and as long as there's money in the budget. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm not speaking into the microphone, I apologize. As long as there's budgeted funds for this, then, yeah. Okay. Alrighty, uh, my last thing is that we had designed uh, the workshop Elections 101, which we put on at the library, the Ann Arbor, I mean, uh, the uh, St. Joseph, ooh, ooh, the St. Joseph Ann County Arbor, Library uh, last fall. Um, I believe that it is a very quality program. It's a good informative program. We actually got, we, uh, we won a honorable mention in the Cleary Awards, which is the, um, Election Assistance Commission uh, for the content, they, we received honorable mention. The problem with Elections 101 last year was that they were scheduled on football Saturdays, and that was because of the availability of the library. And so I was curious if um, there were, if, if we, perhaps we put on an Elections 101 maybe for the media so that the media would be able to understand the absentee process, voter registration process, the roles and responsibilities of the vote center workers, and then um, to actually touch and vote in a mock election on the 
um, on the vote machines. Just for transparency and information, um, and certainly I'd love to open it up to lots of other people, but it certainly did not pan out with doing it on a football Saturday. It was, um, it was a waste of resources because we had so, many, so few people. But I, it's, it's a really, it's a great thing for information and informing the public. So I, what does, who's got some more suggestions here for that? Uh, I, I don't know, I haven't given it any thought. So uh, it wasn't something that we did as a board last year, right? It was just an initiative of the clerk's office? That's correct, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, again, it goes to, into voter education and, and we, yeah. Yeah, conceptually, I think it's a good idea. Um, uh, back during the Lickey administration, when I was city attorney, we ran a local government academy that um, uh, had a number of sessions. And it was pretty well received. Not a lot of people at any one time, but over the course of several years, there was a fair number of people that went through that. And I think that there's, um, you ha they have to be able to market it effectively and to be able to get the word out that in fact, and sometimes it takes a little bit of time, a couple of years to kind of get it, get the word out that this is something that is worth taking a look at and, and, and seeing why it is uh, important. So I think it's worth, certainly worth the effort. Mm -hmm. And um, we can obviously fine tune it in terms of marketing and content uh, as we go. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll ask around. Uh, some of the high schools were very interested in us coming in and, and doing one of those. I would not bring in the vote machines. I mean, that's, that is using up a lot of resources is to bring the actual vote machines. But, you know, maybe we get two or three high schools together in one location and, you know, their teacher gives them credit for going to the Elections 101. But I just wanted to make you aware that we are thinking about that also, voter information. Okay. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Any other business? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm going to open the floor for public comment with a couple of caveats. Uh, one, I have to leave at 2.20, so if, it's, if people are still moving forward, I'm going to give my, the authority uh, to Chuck to adjourn the meeting when the public comments are done, if they're still going on at that time. Secondly, uh, please restrict your comments to three minutes or less. And third, please remember this is not a question and answer session. We are here to listen to your comments, not to engage in a dialogue. That, that's the kind of thing that can be done after the meeting. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Hi, I'm good? Yep. Hi, Clifton French. Uh, I live in Granger. Um, so I see three lawyers up here. Uh, I respect all of you. Uh, I know some of you better than others. Um, however, I'm very surprised that uh, nothing was brought up in that electioneering comment. I, I think that, that that is probably the most uh, disingenuous uh, argument against what was going on here. Um, nobody can walk into an election wearing a pen that says, you know, vote Clifton, vote anything. So essentially what you're saying is anybody's name being on the ballot would be considered electioneering. That is asinine, it's insane, everybody knows it. Um, that, that argument is, is bad. Uh, <clears throat> further, you guys are just adding stuff into code. Um, there's nothing in Indiana code that says that the nickname itself, even though the nickname is part, that's his nickname. Um, somebody's nickname being partisan is not against Indiana code, it's not. Um, further, I mean, we have Doug Chaffee, uh, who is literally campaigning with the Republicans. He's, he's sitting in Republican booths during events with Republicans side by side, being endorsed by the Republicans. Is that type of campaign illegal? Uh, can he be sanctioned for that kind of campaign? Um, he's, he's doing everything within his campaign in a partisan nature. Uh, those are my three arguments. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Ben Dallas Mega here. Yes, hear me okay? Yep. All right. So I'd like to echo a little bit of what Clifton just said. Uh, my name is Ben Dallas Mega. I live in Mishawaka. Um, you guys are adding stuff to the code, unfortunately. I mean, I'm looking at it right here. I got Indiana Code 3 5 7 5. Nowhere in this code does it differentiate between a partisan candidate and a nonpartisan candidate. It's just not in here. 
You're adding what doesn't exist. You're making a judgment with your feelings instead of what's right here in front of you in black and white. That's pretty hyper-partisan. I don't get it. I do want to commend you for at least taking this up again and talking about it. I do appreciate that. But you're adding to what isn't there. You're just using your feelings. and You're wishing that the law says something than what it says. That's what you're doing. You want the law to say something else. That's not what it says. It's right here. This is the code. Okay, and if we're going to talk about nonpartisan, if it's really that nonpartisan, that's pretty out of touch. I mean, when we had my original hearing on July 18th, the vice chairman of the party was there in the front row, grinning from ear to ear, and the entire hearing was about my nickname on the school board ballot. That's why we had that meeting on July 18th. There wasn't other business. But yet, why was the vice chairman of the party there? grinning from ear to ear and so happy that I was kicked off the ballot. So I think really, I mean, it's, I, I respect your decision, really. You guys did what you did. Um, but I, I, I think it's, you're disenfranchising voters that go to the, go to the Penn Harris Madison School District. They're not, you're not giving them a chance to vote for who they want to vote for. The, the local GOP, the county GOP, they picked their candidate. They're openly, can they're openly campaigning with Doug Chaffee. He was one of my opponents. He is openly campaigning with Laura Zappia, okay, with Anthony Rutten, who just gave you a speech last month about the importance of nonpartisan school board elections. School board elections, but now he's campaigning with the school board candidate. They're in the same election booth. Two weeks ago at the music festival, it's all over social media. I almost passed out pictures for you, but I didn't think it was that important. But yeah, so like, it's not nonpartisan. That's just the fact. Um, it's not being campaigned as such. Why did the party, why is the party came out and why are they supporting the school board candidate if it's so nonpartisan? Now I know I can't ask questions, but they were in a campaign booth two weeks ago. It's all over social media. They're wearing their t-shirts and they were electioneering, I guess. Well, they weren't really voting, but they were in a, they were in a, a political booth. So it is what it is. Um, there's another campaign that is acting partisan. And how much, how much time I got? Five seconds. Well, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for hearing me. Thank you. Good afternoon, Pam Clay, South Bend. Since we're not giving our addresses, I'll give you my city. Um, I have a rhetorical question. Uh, there was an article in Sunday, August 4th, South Bend Tribune about definitions of the shoot. And the 50 feet has to be a radius. And I'm just kind of wondering what our county is doing about that. Hello, Diana Hess, St. Joe County Chair, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, I just have a little follow-up. I probably should have gotten up under other business. <laughs> However, just to confirm, Andrew, so we're only going to have 41 vote centers. We're only going to have 41 vote centers for the Correct. general. Okay. Uh, then also, uh, we almost have our early vote workers done. I'll get those two. Uh, but how many total workers do we need for the vote centers? Because we're working on those two. So I, I need that information soon. I don't think I have it yet. Uh, and then I'd also like to make sure that the chairs get a copy of that vote center worker contract. And I'd also like to commend you on the Elections 101 because I think there's a dire need for civics education of all kinds in our society today. So I think that's, uh, I think that's a valuable program worth trying to get out there somehow. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Can I ask a question real quick, Ms. <clears throat> uh, Ms. Clays? You said there was an editorial in the Tribune on August 4th about question about the shoot. I was just going to ask- article, an, an, not a, an article, not an editorial. Do you know who wrote the article? Because I'm going to read it and then try to report back to Thomas you. Thomas B. Langhorn of the Evansville Courier Press. It was in the USA Today Network, Indiana, and yeah. Great. I, I've never Thank seen, you. Seen the, Thanks a lot. The Indiana Election Division actually put out in their newsletter what the radius is. So, and they even drew a picture. Yeah. Great. Okay. All Thank right. You. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Carries unanimously.
Our next meeting is when? 18? Do we remember? <laughs> I don't remember. I've, I've got it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, 11th. At 11 o'clock in, in the commissioner's room on the 7th. 